do I have any hash hashtag silver sisters in the house? <laughs> um, I I let my hair go um, go gray back in I think 2019. I think it was before 2020. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> Today we're here to talk about how I can help you decorate your house with a patriotic theme on a budget. And I'm going to be sharing seven DIYs that are beginner level friendly and turn out adorable. And let's stop talking about it. Let's start being about it and let's get to crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Before we deep dive into the DIYs for today, I wanted to share that this video is part of a playlist. It's called the Talented Creators Collaboration, and it's hosted by DIY with Aria, Lovely D's Creations. The guest host is Maxine Loves Crafts, and the co-host is Buckeye Girls Lifestyle. I'm gonna have a link to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box below. You guys know where to check it out at. After you're done watching my video, head on over to the playlist and check it out. This first DIY is super easy to do. I'm just taking a scrap piece of wood and I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and my paintbrush and I'm just painting on a good coat on the what this is going to be the front of the DIY. Now on the back and the sides I'm going to be taking this Waverly wax in the color antique and I'm going to be painting it on and then I do take a scrap damp piece of cloth and I wipe it off. Some people use a baby wipe. Some people apply it with a baby wipe and just kind of wipe it off that way. But I usually prefer to paint it on and then just kind of wipe it off. I did cut out a decal using my Cricut. And if you don't have a Cricut, don't let that stop you. <laughs> you could use a paint pen. You could use some white chalk paint. You could use some stickers. Um, they have some cute little clings at Dollar Tree, or at least the last time I went they had them. And you could use that to use for this project as well. Now I'm just going to apply the decal to the front of this little scrap piece of wood that I painted. See, y'all, this is so easy to do. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of materials or supplies or anything like that to make cute stuff. And this is how it turned out how adorable and it looks so great on a tear tray it's a really great filler piece and so so easy to do for our next project i'm taking a tray that i got from dollar tree and again i'm using the waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and i usually just take the paint that's inside the lid <laughs> and i use that to actually start painting and i'm not wanting to paint all the sides red so i'm just trying to be careful and kind of paint towards the edge so that way it doesn't get on the sides or anything like that but I'm giving it a good coat and this this chalk paint really does cover really well and kind of like the other project I'm taking Waverly wax in the color antique and I'm just painting on the wax and then I'm going to take that same scrap damp piece of cloth and I'm going to wipe it off now sometimes the Dollar Tree wood pieces <laughs> I was trying to think what to call this like some of the wood pieces I don't know they have like spots where the antiquing wax doesn't really take as well but I mean you know it gets the desired look that I'm trying to go for <laughs> and if you don't have antique wax you could use you could paint it whatever color you wanted or you could just use thin down brown paint now I have this decal that I've had in my stash for forever and again if you don't have a like a Cricut or a silhouette or something like that, you could absolutely hand letter this on. You could use vinyl clings. You could use stickers. You could draw it on if you want to. You could trace it on. You could do so many things that you could do to make super cute decor. So I'm just applying this decal and I'm trying to do it very carefully. I'm using my favorite paper transfer tape so that none of the paint pulls up. And I wanted to add a little detail to each end of the piece. So I just used some washi tape and then, I don't know, I went to go get a bite to eat or something. Where am I? Oh, here we are. <laughs> like, where did I go? And I'm, so I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White and I'm just putting, you know, painting on a thin little line. And if you don't have washi tape, you can use painter's tape. You can use masking tape. Just be super careful. Or you could, you could just try to do a straight line without any help at all. 
I don't know if you saw there, but I had my little drying, my little heat tool to kind of dry it so that I could go to the next step quicker. And then I'm just doing the same thing to the other side. I'm applying the tape. I'm not measuring it. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it, measuring it with my heart. That's how I like to do it around here. <laughs> and so um, hopefully they're even-ish looking, you know. And then I'm just taking that same chalk paint in the color Snow White and adding a line to the other side. Once it's done and it's dry, you just pull that tape back and the line should be pretty crisp and it does look like it is. It's very simple and easy to do. But I thought it looked kind of plain, so I took this little, I think it's an embossing tool or something, and I'm just dipping it in that snow white paint and I'm just adding little dots, kind of like a little pattern there. Not really any rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it necessarily. But I think it just adds a little fun pop of, um, I don't know, just like a little fun thing to add to it. <laughs> fun little embellishment. And this is how it turned out. I really like that I added the dots because it was looking just a little too plain. And I didn't want to add another line. I just thought that looked too rigid or something. But I think the little dots kind of add a little fun pop to the piece. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I said this was beginner friendly DIYs, and it is. But these little three wood pieces i did cut out <laughs> um in my in my garage i cut it out and i'm using those three paints that you see there a red white and blue paint and it kind of looks like um what do you call it the guy on for halloween frankenstein <laughs> it looks like frankenstein anyway it's not frankenstein <laughs> so i am painting the entire back and all the sides well not all the sides. I'm painting the back with the Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And here's a little tip for you. Take some masking tape, sticky side up, and I'm using two little pieces of tape to hold that piece of tape down. And then you can put those little wood pieces on there and they're going to stick to it so that you can paint it. And I'm painting those wood pieces with this Waverly chalk paint in the color snow white. And it works like a charm because it holds it in place. You don't have to get your fingers all messy with the paint or anything like that. And works easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now the other side of, of this little piece I painted with um, Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And now I'm using that blue paint, which I forget the color, the name of the color. But you can use any blue paint that you like. If you like the royal blue or if you like the more muted blue, it's up to you. But I am painting the bottom portion white. So I don't know why I should do the blue paint already. Anyway, now I'm using, <laughs> I'm painting the little strip there with this blue paint. And I needed more paint, so I had to squeeze some out on that little piece of paper there. But I'm painting across. This is the brim of his hat. Can you guess what it is so far? Okay, I'm painting the top portion of his hat. Oh, little guy is going to get his tail in my paint. <laughs> Go away. No, um... He did not get in the paint. <laughs> but anyway, I'm painting the top of the hat with this Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And if you don't have a wood piece like I have, you can paint this on a square piece of wood or a rectangle piece of wood, and it's going to work fine. You just kind of kind of go with it, you know what I mean? And then I'm making some white stripes with that Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White. I'm going to take this linen color, and I'm going to put a little small circle on the part but this is not a gnome but it kind of looks like it ends up looking like a gnome but it's not a gnome anyway I'm kind of covering up the top part of the hat so that it doesn't get up there but this is not a gnome it's starting to look like a gnome y'all <laughs> but, but anyway if you don't have this shape which why would you because I cut it out of my in my garage you could just use a rectangle like shape like the back of the tray you could just use that and just do the same type of shapes and you're going to get the same effect. You're going to get the same idea. So I did take some Parisian gray and I'm trying to make a, like the beard and y'all, I mean, okay. I'm just going to be honest. It looks like a gnome right now. And then I add the eyes because I had an inspo piece that I was doing this from. I'm adding eyes. I'm using some, just a black uh, paint pen to add the eyes. Then I'm using a white paint pen to add like the little dots in the eyes. And then I'm trying to use that white paint pen to fix the beard because y'all, <laughs> I mean, 
it, you're going to be able to tell when I show you the, the finished product, but it looks like Yosemite Sam. It doesn't look like Uncle Sam. It looks like Yosemite Sam. So, anyway, uh, you know, it is what it is. So I took those white stars that I had painted earlier, and I'm just attaching three across the brim of the hat. And y'all, this is how it turned out. <laughs> Again, you, you get the idea that it's supposed to be Uncle Sam, but it doesn't doesn't quite get there but you know you have to let me know in the comments below what you think is it yosemite sam or uncle sam now if you didn't know i actually have a crafting group on facebook called crafty diys on a budget i I'd, I'd love it if you check it out and i'd love it if you join and if you do join please share something that you're working on or maybe share a word of encouragement to somebody who's posted in the group already so um, all right, let's get back to crafting. I love to take the stickers off of the pieces that I do because I just think it looks more finished when I do that. So that's what I did. I used my heat tool to take that off. And I'm taking some Waverly um, Antique Wax. In the, no, Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And I'm painting it on. And I am using gloves because that stuff, I don't know, it just gets all over. <laughs> And sometimes it's really hard to get off my hands, but this is not a tray. This is a, well, I guess it could be kind of a tray, but it's like a little crate and I got it from Dollar Tree. So it was $1.25 and I'm just painting on the wax and then taking that scrap piece of cloth that is damp and I'm wiping it off. I did cut out, um, these God bless America with my Cricut, but if you don't have that, you could hand letter these on, you could, um, use stickers, tons of different options. Don't let stuff hold you back. But I'm using a mushroom colored paint to kind of go over the stencil area. And then I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White to dab with my little dabber sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just dabbing on up and down motion. So it hopefully will be a crisp stencil when I pull it off. Pull back and it was not as crisp as I was hoping for, but you know what? Sometimes things work out great, and other times things look a little more rustic, a little more primitive. That's what we're just going to say. It just looks a little more primitive. But to make it even more primitive, Lisa's going to try to put on stars like, I don't know what I was thinking, y'all. I should have done a stencil for this part. But here it goes to show. It still turns out cute. And I'm hand drawing on these stars, as you can see. You can kind of tell that they're supposed to be stars. But also, um, maybe I'm not the best at doing stars. I don't know. To finish out the look, though, I am taking this red with white polka dots ribbon. And I'm just going to kind of put it around. I think it just pops really well against that antiquing wax and the white and the blue. I just think it all kind of looks so cute together. And this is how it turned out. I added the little bow on top and I just think it looks so cute. It would just would really make a cute piece for a tear tray. So easy to make. Like I said, beginner friendly. Anybody can make this. I got this United States wood piece ages ago from Hobby Lobby, like 90% off, you know? And so it didn't cost me hardly nothing. And I'm taking the Waverly Wax and the color antique. I say this all the time, y'all, but... Do you know what it is that I'm using? Maybe I don't need to say it so much. I don't know. Anyway, painting it on, wiping it off, just like I always do. And then I'm using my cutting mat to kind of guide me as to where I'm going to be putting these strips of painter's tape. And I'm just going to be just going along like that. Like, there you go. I'm just putting the painter's tape on. You could, if you didn't have like a cutting mat to use as a guide, you could just put like a little piece of painter's tape in between as kind of a spacing tool. I'm taking that same blue that I've been using and the same crimson red that I've been using, and those are going to be our paint colors. And I'm painting the first two sections, three sections or whatever. I'm using the blue and just trying to give it a good coat. And then I'm using the red for the remainder of the sections. And I've pressed down the painter's tape as good as I could so that way it hopefully would not leak underneath and it would give me a crisp line when I pull up the painter's tape. But you don't have to use painter's tape if you don't have that or whatever. You could just paint on the lines and it would look super cute as well because you could just go for a more rustic look. So I'm pulling the tape back and I usually do it when it's not completely dry just so that the paint and the 
stuff doesn't all stick together and it mess up my paint job or anything like that but i'm pulling it off and it looks like it's working really pretty good and then i had a decal that i cut out using my cricut and again vinyl clings would work really really well on this project and um hand lettering stickers anything but this one says land that i love and then I'm taking a white paint pen and I'm just adding some just little dots to kind of add a little fun you know, like to the piece. And I'm just doing it in the part that's stained, not in the part that's painted. Although you could put it in the painted part. I didn't. I chose to go on the stained side. And look how pretty this turned out. I mean, it is so super simple. I mean, hardly any technique is, I didn't use hardly any technique at all. I mean, seriously, anybody can make this. It's just painting on some lines and I added a, you could add a sticker and bam, you've got a super cute project. Now, if you don't, if you say, Hey Lisa, I don't have that United States wood piece. That's okay. Again, you could outline one and just paint it in something like that. Lots of different options, y'all. Okay. This wood project here, I cut out this tag shape using a tag that I had from Dollar Tree as my template. And I just cut it out of that wood fencing material that I seem to have an endless supply of. And I'm using the Waverly chalk paint and the color crimson to give it a good coat, front, back, and all the sides. I did have another um, decal, y'all. And I know I keep saying it, I haven't really shown you an example of not using a decal, but you could don't have to use a decal for this. In fact, um, I zhuzh it up in a bit, you'll see. But anyway, I just add that on there and I'm threading through some jute twine for the hanger piece. And this is how it turned out. As you can see, I did add some dots to it because I think the dots are making everything look fun today. And it's a super easy way to kind of zhuzh up something and give it a little extra pizzazz, you know? But this piece is so easy and you could have used a sticker in the place for the decal. You could have hand lettered this, just all kinds of things. You really could have just left it plain and put a star there or something. Just can make really simple pieces, but they look so cute on the tear tray. I've been getting into watercolor y'all. So I'm going to show you another watercolor piece. I have taped my watercolor paper down and I'm just going over. You really can't see it. Sorry, but it's, it's there. I'm putting some water on the paper in the shape of a popsicle and I'm just loading the water on first. And then I'm taking some red paint and I'm just dropping in the paint. Just as you see me doing here, watercolor is easy, but it's not easy, but it's easy, especially this project is super easy to do. And so I'm just dropping in some of that red paint, but I'm going to leave a little bit of the white space and I'm going to drop the blue in the bottom and the paint goes where the water is. So it's not really going to bleed out to the rest of the paper. It's going to kind of stay where the water is. And so I'm just being very careful to not put anything in the middle because I do want it to be white in the middle and just add as much paint as you feel like you need. And as you can see, I'm going back in and darkening up the top a little bit and kind of just helping guide it down a little bit. And I'm taking some brown paint and some, I think it's ochre, yellow ochre paint. And I'm trying to kind of come up with a tan color, like a popsicle stick color, okay? Like a wood color, I guess. And then I'm just kind of lightly painting in where the popsicle stick goes. And you know, it's, it's watercolor's fun. That's all I'm going to say. Watercolor's fun. <laughs> so I fiddled with this a little bit more than I probably needed to, but you know, just trying to get it to look the way that I want it to look. Is it going to look exactly like somebody else's? No, because watercolor reacts differently with different ways, different, you know, how hard you press or how hard you don't press, how much water you got on your brush, all that kind of thing. There's so many variables to it, but that's what part of makes it fun for me. Now I wanted to move on to the next step. So I am going to make it dry and I'm just using my heat tool to do that. And I'm pulling off the tape, but I shouldn't have pulled off the tape yet because I'm going to go back and put this other tape on there. I don't know why I pulled off the other tape, but anyway, I wanted to make sure it was even to be honest. So I'm using this little bit thinner tape and I'm going to be taping 
all the sides. And I'm also going to be putting a small piece of tape right where you see me putting the tape because I'm going to write something there and I don't want this part to get messed up. And I'm using a, I think it's a Micron pen number three, I think. And I'm just, it's a black pen and I'm just outlining the popsicle and outlining the popsicle stick. I like that technique, the fine liner technique. Then I'm taking some blue paint, some red paint, and I'm splattering it on. It does get everywhere when you splatter, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. It makes it look cute, so I'm going to do it. And now I'm going to pull up the paint, uh, the tape, where I had it, where I was going to write something, and I'm writing in happy fourth. I think that's what I write. <laughs> and so uh, this gives me an idea where it's supposed to be. And I'm using that little fine liner pen. And I go back in with a brush pen. And I really should have used just a regular marker, but I didn't. And I was kind of rushing myself in the writing part. And it wasn't as neat as I would have liked. But it all turns out cute. I want to show you this. So I'm removing the tape. And in general, this is, see me heating it up, okay? Because if you ever have problems with your tape coming off and tearing your watercolor paper. One of the tricks is to just use the heat gun to kind of heat up that adhesive and loosen it up a little bit. So you see me, and I feel like I'm spending enough time doing it, but when I go to pull off this piece of tape here, I'm leaving this a little bit <laughs> real time here so that you can kind of see some of the tape pulled off the watercolor paper, but that's okay because you know what? In the end, it all turns out great not really even going to notice that. It's not going up into some gallery or anything like that. It's just from a tear tray. And this is how it turned out. I love this. <laughs> I love watercolor paint and I'm having so much fun doing it. If you want to see this or this type of tutorial, but slow down a little bit more and maybe kind of me explaining the process and how to do watercolor, let me know in the comments below. If you like seeing watercolor, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't like seeing it, let me know. Because I like doing it, but I want to share things that you guys want to see as well. Thanks, y'all, so much for joining me today in my studio. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I hope to see you the next time I share a video. So be sure and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you'll know when one comes out. I've got a couple more videos that I think you'll enjoy. Should be right over here. <laughs> And don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!